villager, witch, zombie. What do these three things have in common? Is this some weird version of Kill Mary Screw? No, you see, the zombie and the witch represent potential life paths for the villager. Zombie if killed by zombie, and witch if struck by lightning. And this brings us back to our witch farm, and boy, has this thing been a huge project. This episode, we are going to finish it. So where exactly did we leave off? I divided the circle into four quadrants, and I finished the first one last time. So the plan was each quadrant would be the same, and then within each one there would be an area to produce infinite villagers, a place to store the villagers, and why do we need to store them? Uh, because entity cramming will kill them otherwise. Now some people have correctly pointed out that there is a way to get around that, and I even made a video uh, showcasing a way to do that. Uh, but we won't do that in the survival world, and in fact, it's actually a blessing in disguise that I didn't understand that at the time. Uh, for two reasons. One, someday Mojang will probably patch the vine trick. And then two, this place produces much less lag when villagers are separated. Uh, when I did the other one, they could barely hold 400 in one spot. I've tested and lag is actually reasonable with double the villagers so long as all of those villagers are not in the exact same spot. So this will actually work better then. And where we last left off, one quadrant was up and running. And it worked. It wasn't full, and I accidentally released all the villagers at once, but it did work. So the first thing we need to do is work on the breeders for those other quadrants. I've made a lot of progress already, and it is a ton of blocks, guys. All right, so you see how that villager just walked through? They will actually search out workstations. Uh, so that's how I've been populating each of these breeders. Originally, I was going to use minecarts and drop each one off, but it's actually a lot simpler to just to let them do it themselves. And then afterwards, you just patch it up with the trap doors, and then only the children uh, will be able to get under that. The breeder infrastructure is mostly in place. Uh, I just am slowly populating them yet. Look at this, we actually got an iron golem to spawn in this one, and I'm actually a little scared. Uh, so, okay, so he doesn't hate me. Uh, so I've had to kill a lot of villagers around here, and I wasn't sure if the golems had gotten to the point where they're just going to try to murder me. Uh, but it looks like I've, I've managed to kill all the villagers in secret, and somehow they didn't register that. Uh, which is a great sign, because I keep getting villagers in spots where they aren't supposed to be. Uh, which makes for a uh, messy cleanup, to say the least. I'm actually going to go ahead to start working on the storage system now. The breeders are physically built, uh, but they are not 100% fully populated yet. My plan is I'm going to slowly check in and make sure the villagers are finding their new homes as I wait for them to keep reproducing. And a lot of this work is still pretty mindless yet. I'm just copying what has already been done in the first quadrant. We're starting to get into the details of the drop-off system, and we have reached our first problem, or should I say opportunity. Uh, so this drop-off system that I made last time keeps jamming, and instead of copying this poor design four times, uh, we're just going to figure it out on this one first. So you can see that minecart just, just staying there. I'm not quite sure why that happens, but I don't know, maybe like 1 in 60 go-arounds, it just gets, it gets like bumped weird and it just ends up like that. So instead of copying this poor design four times, we're just going to figure out this first one. And we don't actually need the minecart to go underneath the villager, we can actually just go beside them. So we'll use water to force them to the edge. We need to do that because if they aren't on the edge, they actually might not get picked up. Ten years ago though, water would actually pop rails off the ground. Uh, so what we would need to do then is keep the water eight blocks away, and that's how we could get around it. Uh, but since that's not a problem, we can do whatever we want, and it'll still work out just fine. And ta-da! Yeah, this works a lot better. Uh, we'll have to make sure to see the minecart come back around to pick up the next guy. But this this works a lot better. It uses fewer rails and then only one minecart at a time too. And it's it's quick enough that it... I, I think it'll be quick enough anyway that it'll work great. Potential problem here. Check out this cat. This is an issue that never crossed my mind at all when I was roughing things out in my head. And actually I still don't think it'll be an issue. So here's the deal. Uh, the cat is less than one block high, uh, so he should only be able to move up sometimes when he's bumped. But if he does make it all the way to the top, he could get out onto the rails and then mess up the path of the minecart. But I actually think he'll just do spawn before that happens. But it is something to keep an eye out for sure. I just put up some colored towers around this place. This will help with orientation because I keep getting flipped around. With each quadrant being mirrored, I've it's very easy to get turned around in the space, but now I know that my nether portal is near the green, the green tower, 
and so I can always head there. The other reason I wanted to do this, I was having trouble keeping track of progress of all of the tasks. Now I can keep track of things and like tripwires and I can just know, okay, tripwires are set up for green, white, but we might still need them for yellow, for example. Anyway, that's where this is at. I'm just finishing up all of these little things. All right, we're at the very base of this thing and we're here because we're sending a signal from the top where the lightning strikes all the way down below. This is a system that was set up previously, but I want to modify it a bit. And just actually just to help you get oriented a little bit around here. Uh, this place also doubles as where the villagers grow up before they get dropped off to the storage. And it is still an absolute mess down here. Uh, so the signal comes in and then gets sent out to both sides. Um, and so we'll follow this line now. Yeah, when I said earlier I was afraid of the golem because villagers keep getting into places that I don't want them. And I have to keep removing them. This is, uh, this is a great example of that. I don't know, hopefully a drown gets them or something. So anyway, a signal goes up to this device and it makes sure that each batch gets released one at a time. I explained it a bit more in depth in the previous episode. But basically, uh, this whole thing will then rotate around and then the block controls the opening uh, via piston for, for where they're being stored. Uh, so I'll head back and then there is one of course on the other side as well. Okay guys, I cleaned up a bit of the basement, and so we'll fly there now. Yeah, this looks a lot nicer. So my analytics say that you are much less interested in the redstone and much more interested in the results of the redstone. So basically just to explain the concept of, of all this new junk, um, the thing rotates seven times and I need it to reset at the beginning. Uh, so all this thing does is keep track of the rotation. And then once it gets to the right spot, it'll send six more signals uh, to get it all caught back up and ready to go. And so this was one of the last things that I had to do. But other than that, we are getting really, really close. Uh, so basically the plan is now I'm going to test everything individually to make sure it works. Um, and then we will await the thunderstorm. One more thing I forgot to mention. So we have tripwire counters that keep track of the villagers in storage to ensure that they don't cram each slot. Um, and But I never made a way to reset those counters uh, once once they had started. Uh, and this will, this will do it when a thunderstorm happens. So lightning will strike and that will send a signal to this area and then a quick pulse and we'll send three separate signals up through vertical torches that will power the other side of the dropper. So basically when it counts item an item goes from one side of the dropper to the other, and then during the thunderstorm, uh, each strike will send three items back the other way. So that will empty it back, and then it will be it will be ready to go once the thunderstorm ends. I'm troubleshooting, and we have 99 problems, but a witch ain't one. So I've been looking through all the different parts, and I've already fixed more than I thought I would. I'm mostly done though now, I think. Unfortunately, I recently slept through a thunderstorm, uh, so we might be waiting a bit longer than I was intending. I was so close to having this thing be operational, but oh well. Great news guys, this thing is good to go. Earlier I was disappointed that I missed the thunderstorm. This, not all of the slots in the storage system had yet been populated, so it wouldn't have been a full run anyway. And now we are we are actually really close to this thing being completely full. Uh, so what are we going to do until then? I think we're going to finally clean this place up just a little bit. We've had so much time spent waiting for this thunderstorm that I cleaned up a bunch and I just I just kept going. Uh, so I plan on doing the decorating of this place more in future in a future episode. Uh, but and this one was really just more about getting things up and running. But uh, since we had the extra time, I put a roof cover over this top area here. Yeah, it's basically just an arched roof just to connect both the breeding sides. And then I have it continuing through the other side as well. So now you see we have villagers on all four spots within the chamber. This means that we are ready to go. I think I'm actually going to start editing and then just leave Minecraft AFK with the sound on and then when I hear thunder, I'll start. So some people might call this a design flaw, that we have to wait for a thunderstorm in order to receive any kind of goodies. We won't use the F word in this episode. And it's, besides, it's all about the process anyway. And I tried explaining this whole thing to my wife and she was like, 
Do you play Minecraft just to make Rube Goldberg machines? And uh, yeah, fact check, kind of true. Boys, here we go. This is the moment we have been waiting for, and I actually didn't even come close to finishing editing. Uh, so it is a thunderstorm. I already checked. The way that you can check if it's a thunderstorm and not just rain uh, without actually hearing or seeing lightning is if you sleep in your bed, uh, if it lets you sleep in your bed, I should say, uh, obviously you have to click leave uh, before you sleep through the storm, uh, but it's a really quick way to, to check. And it's actually something I've, I've done long before I even started YouTube. So this chamber actually won't receive a ton of lightning strikes. The lightning rod is very deep in it, and so it will strike less often. If you think of it like using bone mail on a sapling that has a block next to it, yes, it can grow, but it will take longer to grow. And, and that's the situation we're in with the lightning. But I think that that's okay. We really only need it to strike like eight times, I think. Anyway, I'm gonna sit in a spot and wait for that first strike to get to get it on camera. There we go, the pistons retract and they fall. Okay, let's check out the next batch. It's the one closest to us that retracts first. It might take a sec. Okay, I'll go to a better spot here. Ah, just in time. Yeah, they really spread when they fall. But okay, so it's going to work towards reloading and I'll work towards finding a new spot to watch the next strike uh, so we can all watch it from another angle. It would be really great if I didn't get creepered, uh, but I just don't want to miss a strike. Oh, and there we are. All right, so things are not moving quite as quickly as I was hoping. I'm, I brought a channeling rod, and we're going to use that to speed things up. I will move the rod up in the future uh, so that we get strikes more often because we want this thing to be fully automatic. Uh, but just for this episode, I'm going to use a channeling rod to finish things off. Uh, so that's what we'll do, and that way we can get everyone uh, in within one storm. I'm kind of surprised I didn't have that achievement already. Yeah, even with the channeling rod, this is I, I, I'm still I'm still really enjoying this thing. Uh, let's check out the spoils. So obviously this is not the most optimal way to kill witches in the game at all, or even close. Uh, this farm is mostly just to showcase an interesting game mechanic, and then get a, a little bit of potion supplies from it. How embarrassed do I need to be for spending all this time uh, to get so little loot? Let's let's check it out. Yeah, you know, that's okay. I, I'll take it. I will take this. It'll take a while to actually profit from redstone on this project, but uh, you know, we'll get there. We're gonna do a lot of projects in this area, and this place is only going to grow and grow. Uh, but until then, see ya.